morning. So, yeah, politics. Growing up, it was always one of those things that I always thought was one of those you don't talk about. Even still, nobody likes to talk about politics. But they do have a major role in life, and I guess I've got a little bit to say on it. And um, This is way out of comfort zone for just being up here. So bear with me if I'm a ping pong ball all over the place, but I've got a bunch of different points to touch on. Um, first off, let's open in a word of prayer and go from there. Dear Lord, thank you for this day you've given us and thank you for this time that we get to meet together and even in this time of uh, uncertainty with the illness and just thank you that we still have the freedoms that we do that we can meet together and not have to fear persecution at this time. Help us to glorify you and everything and always be ready to give an answer and just always be a witness for you. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen. So, um, I guess starting out, we'll go to Daniel 3 um, with me Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, probably all know, most all probably know his story, their story, how um, Nebuchadnezzar, he made the, uh, made the golden, golden idol and said when the music plays, you have to bow down and worship it. Well, everybody did except for Shadrach, Meshach, and, and Abednego. And in uh, verse, pretty much like verses 8 on, um, they get turned into Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, in verse 13 it goes, the Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were brought, and these men. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, "Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do ye not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at that time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, whatever that instrument is." sultry and dulcimer and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, if ye worship that, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Furnace, And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he would, he would deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if, it not, but, if it be, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So right there they go, our God is powerful enough. We're not serving you. Whether we die or live and he saves us, we're not serving you. Your, your law you just made is not um, biblical. It is not, at that point, I guess it wouldn't have been biblical. It was not following um, God's commandment. Um, so right there, they set God over government, and they chose it with their life. I mean, they got cast into the furnace. I mean, he commanded it to be extra hot. He throws the, guard, the guards that go to throw him in, they died from the heat immediately, just opening the door. And then they get thrown in, and an angel comes, and all of a sudden there's four people in the furnace. Um, just a remarkable story. Um, so, and that's where we're at this. We have leaders above us that put into effect laws. Laws, they are, um, I heard a person state it, and I liked how they put it. Laws are made to legislate legislate morality. The question is, whose morality? If they are not believing God, if they do not have biblical ethics, they are going to put in their morals, their morality. They are going to put, their laws are going to be off of what they believe is right and wrong. So if they do not have biblical ethics, they are not going to be a biblical, most likely they are not going to be biblical morals. I mean, obviously there are 
are a lot of morals that have transferred down. Even though somebody might not believe in God, they still have morals that are close. But a lot of them, as we see now, are under attack. I mean, even just the first, the commandment, thou shalt not kill. I mean, nowadays there's so many killings with abortion. I mean, they say it's not killing, but we all know it is. Um, I mean, Corey Tin Boom in 19, well, she, she was another example of not obeying government. 1940, Germany invaded the Netherlands. And then um, they said they started packing up the Jews and shipping them out because they didn't meet their criteria of who was allowed to live in their country. They started shipping them to concentration camps. The, the Tin Booms, not just Corey, but their, the entire family put their, own, put their lives at risk, and many of them paid with their lives to save or to do their best at keeping them safe, the Jews safe, knowing full well what would happen if they were caught, but knowing that um, God is greater than government. Um, Uh, yeah, 1944, they were captured, they were in prison, they were tortured. Um, and still, um, Betsy Ten Boom, at age of 59, as she was dying in a concentration camp, um, told her sister, Corey, there is no pit so deep that God is not deeper. In the point of dying, she still understood God is deeper, God is greater. Just a marvelous thing to remember. Um, in, um, well, Edmund Burke, he was, he's credited with it. When I was looking it up, I guess somebody else might have made the quote first, but he's the one that is most known for it. Um, the quote, the only thing necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. Right there, I mean, the good men of this country are getting fewer and fewer. We have to rise. We have to raise more, and we have to not be afraid to speak out. Um, because if we don't, who is? It's going to be the people that don't have the ethics we do, the people that um, don't believe God. Um, uh, in um, back, what, I think it was 2009, when Obama was in office, he put... Um, Chia Fieldbum in office of the uh, EEOC, the Equal Employment Office Commissioner. Um, he put her in office, or nominated her and had her in office. Um, she was a lesbian activist, and she, she the, one the one day speaking out against, or about gay rights versus religious rights, because um, obviously like bakeries, if they don't want to make a wedding cake for a gay wedding, um, that would be a religious right that they should not have to make. I mean, you would think they wouldn't. But she spoke up and she said, I am having a hard, hard time coming up with any case in which religious liberty would win over gay rights. Those are the people that if we don't voice our opinion, if we, or not our opinion, but if we don't vote, if we don't voice biblical opinion, if we don't, if we just stay in the shadows and we don't, we just abide by what's going on and it's only getting, more and more of these people are getting an office. Um, voting is a way for a Christian to put someone that has biblical ethics into office. It is our way of having, oh, it is one way for us to have our voice heard. One way to try and change some of the wrongs that are going on. Um, I got a little off my notes. Well, a little ahead, I think. Um, trying to find a verse here. Um, I miss. Yeah, Genesis 127 with the gay rights and that. that a lot going on now. You, you now have your, on your paperwork when you go to fill out stuff, you have male, female, and other. We all know Genesis 127, God created man and female. Um, well, 
I'm going to misquote that, so let's go back there and actually read it. Um, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. It doesn't say male, female, and other. Or male and female, and they can choose what they want to be. It's male and female. And that's how it's always been, but our country, or um, humans as a, as a rule don't like authority, it seems. I'm one of those. I, authority is hard to abide by. You want to make your own rules. You want to be out there. and So they push any authority that's above them. God, I mean, you're supposed to obey. They, they feel like he's a leader or somebody that they have to obey, and they just push back against it. Um, so, yeah, that's one way they can push back by saying, oh, let's add an other in there. Um, in Philippians 3.20, we are told to uh, pray. Oh, is that? Hang on. I think I'm in the... I think I'm in the right one. Philippians 3.20. Wait, no, not Philippians 3.20. Is it 3.20? Sorry about that. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. As I said, my notes are all over the place. I almost caught, called Barney multiple times to tell him I was not prepared and couldn't do this, but my lovely wife kept, oh, you can do it, keep studying. So here I am. Um, it goes, I exult, I exhort therefore that first of, all, first of all, supplications, prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority. So right there, we're supposed to pray, we're supposed to give thanks. Um, and then it goes on to say that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So we're to pray for our leaders so that we may live a peaceable life. Politics have a major role in everything you do. This year has been a big eye-opener on how much. I mean, if anybody would have told me last year that churches would have been being shut down, businesses being shut down, everybody's supposed to be required to wear a mask to enter any building or just go out of your house, I'd have laughed at him and told him you're crazy and probably smoking some weed or something. But yeah, now we're here and it's like, wow, everybody just laid down and let, let the politicians do what they wanted. Um, politicians or pol politics affect everything. I mean, a major, major thing that you can, or uh, if I could, I'd bring up a photo. If, if, you, if you get the time, look up a photo of the Korea Pre Korean Peninsula, um, a satellite image at night, and you see just the major difference between two different sets of politics. South Korea, nighttime, it's lit up. You're, you have freedoms. You, have, you, you, can, um, you can choose your own job. You can, you can, be, you can believe what you want. North Korea. It's dark. There's like one little tiny speck of light on there in their area. And that's because they're living under tyrant. Th they're, they don't get to choose who their leader is. And he tells them, you're going to work this, you're going to pay this, you're going to believe this, or you're going to die. Um, I mean, out of it all, yes, God is still able to get in there. I mean, there's still people preaching the word there. There's still people in China and other persecuted countries preaching the word, but they're not, they're not able to do it. They're not, it's not peaceable for them. They are being persecuted, and um, we still have the chance to keep some of that freedom and try and keep uh, peace here by voting, bringing in politicians that actually have morals that are aligned with God's word. Um, as I was going on this, I found a website that's actually quite, um, it's very informational. Um, it's called ontheissue.org. Um, they take 
and all your political can candidates, they're bringing them up and they show their voting record for how they voted on abortion, gay rights, taxes, pretty much all their voting records. Um, very informational site to go on to. Um, just a few of them that brings up is like Trump. He's against abortion and has done many things to fight it. Um, something I hadn't really realized until I went on there was until 2010, he was actually pro, um, what would it be, pro-choice. And then he came over to pro-life and has been a help since then. But like, he's, he called for the ban on late term, or um, late term abortions and, um, oh, what's it called, the Born Alive Act, to where a, abortion fails, the baby's born, the doctors are required to give it, give it medical attention. Otherwise they would just leave it, as sick as that sounds. Um, Biden, I mean, he's voted many times for abo abortion. He wants taxpayers to pay for it more. That, um, and it's all just, it, it's a great site to go on to to look at that. Um, any, ba any battle you abandon, you lose by default. Any government you abandon, you lose by default. Any culture you abandon, you lose by default. Anything that you abandon, you automatically give up, you lost. Don't abandon government. Pray for them. Try and vote people in that have your ethics. Um, or not your ethics, God's ethics. Um, I hope your ethics align with God, so technically they'd be close to your ethics, but vote for God's, vote for God's morals. Um, the country's a mess. It really is. The only way we can turn that around, the only way that that can be turned around is God. Um, so just preach the word, be instant in season and out. Um, that's pretty much all I had. Um, yep, that's, that's it. So, and with, with that, I will turn it back over to Barney.